Now let's take a look at the date dimension. When we created the date dimension using the top-down approach, we specified a beginning and an end date, and we specified the levels of a hierarchy that we wanted to create. In the previous demonstrations, covering the product dimension and the sales territory dimension, we didn't have any hierarchies. And we'll learn more about working with user hierarchies in a separate demonstration. So with the top-down approach, we define some characteristics of our time dimension, and then a table and attributes and hierarchies were created accordingly. Now let's look at our other options for dealing with the date dimension. One is that we can use the dimension wizard just like we have for other tables and use a bottom-up approach when we have a date dimension that already exists. So let's do that first. We have date key as our key column and then we'll use full date alternate key for our name column. So we have the various attributes that we need and we'll just select a few here for simplicity, calendar year, quarter, and month. Quarter and month are named calculations that we built into the data source view to concatenate the year with the quarter number or the month name as applicable here. So when we use the bottom-up approach, we get only the attributes that we selected explicitly, no hierarchy gets created. In this case, the data table already exists and it's populated with data, and all we've done is select which attributes or which columns we want to pull from that table and include in our dimension. So we'll have the date key to uniquely identify each record, and then the full date alternate key as the displayed value. Then of course we have calendar year. The distinct values from calendar year will be displayed in our dimension as well as quarter and month. So the structure of the date dimension in this example is purely dependent upon our underlying data.